The Roos is a region divided into countless duchies, many led by the sons of Rurik, and today we will be uniting those duchies into a single nation and reclaiming the glory of the Kievan Rus. Antebellum has a mini-update that is live right now, overhauling the Russian and Ruthenian regions with over 100 new missions and many more events, multiple paths for forming the Rus, including theocratic and Catholic paths, all aided by a new Casus Belli to unite Rus. After this video, make sure to head over to the Antebellum Workshop and give the mod a try for yourself. And while you're down in the description, make sure to check out the Patreon so you can get early access to these videos like the Giga Chads who support. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content to come. Good old Smolensk here with one of the coolest flags in the entire game. We got a cannon with a chicken on top of it. What more do you need? If this guy knew how much that chicken would be worth, considering the price of eggs right now in 2023, they would be a very, very wealthy investor. We start with some prestige decay and advisor cost, which already off the bat is pretty good. Now, clearly with a cannon in the flag, you better believe they've got some good artillery bonuses. Land fire damage is really solid. Artillery cost 20% is massive. Land leader fire, so more damage in combat. Artillery combat ability and siege ability. And of course, prestige to finish because why would they make it a combat bonus? But the main thing we're here for today is this beautiful mission tree introduced in the Roos mini update for Antebellum. And that is what we are going to be working for is this mission right here, the Heirs of Ruthenia, where uh, you are going to see, we are going to get the event, the restoration of Roos, at which point we will unlock an absolutely mind-bogglingly big mission tree way bigger than basically anything from vanilla as far as i know and uh yeah that's just parm if anybody here knows parmalion you know that dude is absolutely insane and uh he just dedicates way too much time to this mod but i'm not going to complain because i love this mod and another new thing that was added is this unite Rus casus belly here which gives us a 75 percent aggressive expansion and cost for all provinces in ruthenia russia regions as well as provinces in our culture group and our culture group is pretty dang big so yeah I think as long as we can avoid a hug box, we're gonna be able to unite the Rus very quickly. Right off the rip, we can ally a big strong Novgorod who I happily, happily will. So let's go ahead and ally them. That should keep us safe at least uh, initially from getting ganged up on. Go another day and pick up another friend like down in the south because we're going to want to expand. And the key knight among you will notice that the map looks a little bit different. I actually uh, didn't have the mod installed when I started the video, but uh, yes, this is what the map will look like with the mini update. Force limit is 11 here, so let's go ahead and build up to that. Pick a couple of rivals, rival our neighbors immediately because those are the people that we wanna be attacking. Get a general and make our guy a guy. A 3-3, you shall lead. We actually have some lunch split into an extra province as well, so uh, that is another little bit of base tax for us, so that's good stuff. And I actually think this province was split as well. I think uh, Smolensk is three provinces or maybe they're four. But either way, eh, more provinces is good, more development for us. And of course, we have to do these things with their new uh, cool localized names. Let's let Plotsk know that they suck and that we hate them. And now that we've picked up some friends, we have a couple of claims and uh, we have our CB. Now we just need to kind of let some time go by and see who we can attack for our opening moves here. A lot of it is going to depend on who allies who. It says that Zafirosha will join this war on a promise of territory against Ureyev and Tver. I'd like to get an early stack wipe on these guys. That would be really good for us. And I think the ideal scenario here is that I annex these guys. I hope that Zafirosha will give me their land. I'd be surprised if they kept it for themselves. But I hope they give the occupation to me and then I can vassalize these guys and annex them. That would be ideal. A little bit of subject play early might be good for us because, um, you know, force limit is low early game. So subjects are really strong early game for that matter. They kept it for themselves. That's no good. Get them to attach to us and head on in. Leroy Jenkins. Oh, they don't want to fight. They would actually rather fight us in the grasslands. Totally fine with me. And now we just track them down and uh, stack and wipe them. We have an unconditional surrender, which means we're going to start getting a little bit of war exhaustion. I don't actually care, though. I am going to uh, annex Tver or occupy Tver. That way I can take them as a subject as well. Need to get a little something out of this war, right? Ooh, our leader is dead, but uh, we have a new leader and uh, he is okay. 434, Yvonne. I'll take that. That's solid. Sadly, we lost two stab because he was on the siege, but... Whatever, it is what it is. So if I full annex them, it's 42 AE and zero Diplo, but I do have to pay the admin for it. And if I vassalize them, it's 64 Diplo. So I think that's probably the move. And then I'll take war reps because Zephyrosia can't actually take any land, so they won't be too upset about it. Sadly, oh man, we're gonna have to boost our stab up. For the sake of our manpower, I think we're gonna switch a little bit over onto the Merc side of things. I think this is definitely the move. We can attack these guys. They'll call in Muscovy and Polotsk. But uh, Polotsk, I can probably separate piece as maybe another vassal. And then we can take land down here. And Zafirosia will join as well as Rizon. So maybe I can give like Rizon a couple provinces here, separate piece these guys out. We just need to get as big as possible as quickly as possible. Like, that's how we get set up in this, in this war here. 
I don't even think I need to call in Ryzon, but it would probably be best. So let's just do it and we will unite the Rus. Uh, obviously, we need a diplomat. That would be intelligent. And off to war we go. That's a nice catch right here. Hopefully stack wipe their army. And I'm going to head over and siege these guys down as quickly as possible. That way, uh, my allies don't try to uh, claim that this is their rightful land and all that. And if these guys want to come up here and siege down my subject, totally fine with me. Oh, a little bit of a stack wipe over here. Feels good, man. The Renaissance has spawned. We will not be getting it anytime soon at all. Consolidating the state gives us CCR and army tradition from battles. Very useful, especially early on. And let's get uh, these dang Muscovites off of my boy's capital here. Occupy everything that we possibly can. That way, Ryzon does not get any occupations and start demanding land. We might as well loot it all up as well. No problem. Here we go. We're going to take a couple provinces here. A little bit of Dippo, a little bit of Admin. Uh, super reasonable, though. I don't think that AE matters a whole lot because uh, we have these guys as an ally and we're going to plan on keeping them as an ally and of course Zaphorosia takes their capital and keeps it for themselves so I just have to piece these guys out and have them break off an alliance or something like that and I don't really want to give these guys any land I would rather just take it all for myself uh let's see if there's some subjects we can release down this way there is not sadly and I can't give these guys land because Ryzon is going to be upset with us so uh, I don't know man I guess we just annex them and make Zaphorosia happy it is going to give us the broke recently broke promise of territory but uh, I think this is okay because then we can take all their money as well, pay off any of our debts, and uh, we should be fine with that. Core up everything we can, but uh, it's going to be some time here. And AE is just a number, so uh, we're good. We have In the Shadow of the Con here giving us spy network construction and allows claims bordering claims for 15 years. A permanent claim on all neighboring provinces, so uh, pretty nice. I like that. So they're upset with me and they want to break alliance with me, but if you actually have over 30, they generally won't break alliance with you. So you see here we exchange favors for trust and they shouldn't break alliance anymore. It's nice because they're going to keep us from getting attacked, probably from the Golden Horde, but looks like uh, the Golden Horde is actually having some uh, some issues right now. So a nice bit of growth for only eight years in. I can live with this. And we must core and state everything possible. It is going to be very important for our economy. Yes, it's going to put us behind on admin, but man, the stronger we get, the faster we get, it's going to pay off big dividends in the long term. Oh, that's weird. Zephyrosia actually broke alliance with me after that war. I don't really know why, but uh, I assume they want my land. That's fine. I will happily rival them and beat the tar out of them eventually. Rivaling me was definitely a mistake on their end. A very smooth 8,000 men and 13,000 in reserve for my subject of Tver. Vassals are pretty strong. <laughs> And we now have our Cossack, so let's uh, figure out how we want to go about that. For our first reform, this one's actually pretty good. This is from Antebellum, uh, advisor costs and influence, but man, I just you can't go wrong with manpower, especially early. So we're going to go with the manpower. Truce with these Johns is over, and we can declare war basically whenever we want. It's essentially going to be a 1v3, well, 2v3 if you count my subject here. Uh, I reckon I could probably get over here. This is a level 3 fort on a marsh, but uh, these Galicia of Bohemia, once we can get to them, we can piece them out easy. It's honestly just going to be an issue of uh, waiting for our friends to join. Novgorod will join, actually. So all you need to do is, since we have at least 20 favors with them, uh, you pull this guy out. We were going to ask them to prepare for war, which gives us plus 20 reasons. And then uh, we can attack, call Novgorod in. They won't even ask for land. Uh, but before we do that, I am going to mark this all as vital interest just in case. And uh, let's go ahead and declare war, call them in, unite the Rus, but uh, let's get my armies in position first and uh, have them not be drilling. And then here you go, unite the Rus. And we will attack them and get them sieged down. And that should be that. Just really hope Novgorod gives me all the occupations. That's uh, my main thing. Uh-oh. Fighting some battles down here, but they are losing some battles as well. I don't trust the AI to not, like, give me the occupation once we eventually take it. Man, Novgorod is, like, suiciding their armies. So is Tver, for that matter. Tver actually just got stack wiped. Yikes. Nice. They sieged them down, so I can probably actually piece these guys out and even take money. Uh, this is fine. The war reps alone are going to be very useful. These guys are getting beat up in another war, so it's essentially a 1v1 at this point. Ooh, we can get some Streltsy, baby. Don't mind if I do. Three Streltsy? Heck yeah, bro. And just like that, those guys got annexed by Moravia and this uh, Lendia. So that's a thing. And that means we can just full annex these lads for only 24 AE. Very nice. Nobody's upset with us. We get lots of money so we can repay that loan. And uh, just like that, we are in a good, good spot. And that lets us get Game of Thrones, which gives us a 40 tradition general as well as unjustified demands and improved relations and some claims on the Dnipier over here, uh, which is nice because they are my rival and I would like to attack them. And I think I'm actually going to just do it 
right now. That's weird. They're Ruthenian. Why do I not get the Unite Ru CB against them? I feel like I should, but either way, I have claims on most of their land, so we'll just attack them for claims. That's fine as well. Ryzon is willing to join this one, so let's go ahead and uh, ask them to prepare for war and call Ryzon in on this one. Let's go ahead and uh, get these guys off my capital, of course, and obviously we need to get them off of my other forts over here. That is a st 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 stack wipe. Very nice. And uh, I think we can get rid of our mercs at this point. We're, we're doing all right. We've got the uh, subjects and friends that we can call into the wars and save a little bit of money. Let's go ahead and just kick these guys out of the war, take all their money and uh, war reps and, you know, and that just makes it a 1v1. Maybe I can even subjugate them. I could totally subjugate them for 42 AE. Uh, super reasonable. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, do that. Obviously, they're pretty upset with me, but that's okay. We can get them. We have plenty of time. We have 100 percent of them, so we have 15 years to make them loyal. I'm not too stressed. Also, I just subjugated my rival, which gives a huge PP, and having over 50 PP gives us uh, extra mana, which is always nice. Go ahead and rival Lithuania and uh, the Golden Horde. Novgorod must remain a good ally for the time. We continue to state everything up because we need it for our economy, and we get to finally take admin tech. Very nice. With everything stated up, we can now use this one here, this uh, Sudebnik or whatever, and that will give us minus 10 autonomy in 14 provinces, which is going to be quite impactful for our economy. Dare I say, we can actually afford advisors now, which is really nice. We definitely do need to get more men into the army to make my subjects uh, a little more loyal, make sure that they don't uh, get any funny ideas, because you can see here they are quite disloyal just because of their strength relative to me. I think this might be our chance. Let's go ahead and ask these guys to prepare for war. And uh, get to war over here with these guys. That'll call in Ryzon and Yaroslavl. I will annex Ryzon probably, and this Nishi Novgorod might make a good vassal out there. So let's go ahead and get started with that one. That is a very good 636 general, my goodness. Though uh, luckily they're attacking me in the woods and they're probably going to get dominated. Uh, yeah, they got dominated. And then we'll head on over here and attack the Muscovites in the steppes. We have Streltsy as well, so we get a little bit of extra fire damage. That is a st 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 stack wipe. Very nice. Get ahead of time on Diplo here. Get that 20% uh, trade efficiency. A little bit of extra income for us. Fill the coffers, so to speak. Kiev is doing much better now. Still disloyal with that 9 stack, so <laughs> it's not, not ideal. But we have plenty of prestige, so I think what I can do is I can placate them a couple of times, maybe even do a little bit of development in their capital. Something like uh, a couple of clicks here, maybe, and that will uh, free up that nine stack to actually help us out because that nine stack is a lot of men. Ryzon wants out and I will separate piece them. The coalition looks like it's gonna grow, but I'm actually not too concerned about it. I won't separate piece them though, because I can actually take all of this in the actual peace deal and it won't cost me any Diplo. So lots of admin, but uh, you know, we've come to expect that at this point. So we just let these rebels siege them down and eventually take over the siege from them. Uh, tech, I, hopefully they don't win this 14 percenter. And then we will be able to uh, get on to that and then take over the siege at a 28%, which is a really nice number to start a siege at, right? Obviously we lose some manpower, not ideal, but 28% uh, siege and uh, hopefully we win. We did not win, unfortunate, but either way, it keeps the rebels alive, which is funny. And here we go, a little bit of a coalition, but uh, we also have a truce with Yaroslavl as well as Nishi Novgorod. So I think we're okay. And of course, always take the money if you can. Just like that though, we are looking much, much better. Safe to say that Smolensk has kind of grown to be the preeminent power over here in the, the steppes slash southern Russia. Obviously Novgorod is big, but uh, we are fortunate enough to have them as our friendly, friendly ally. Yeah, it looks like we may get a coalition, but I'm not too stressed about it. If they wanted to attack me, they would have to go through all of my subjects as well as these guys up here. So I think we're good. We are ahead of time, so let's go ahead and accept a couple of cultures here. That will boost our economy quite a bit. A lot of people don't understand how important it is to have good uh, accepted cultural cohesion in your nation. The coalition grows a bit more, but I think we're okay, honestly. We need to attack Zafirosia at some time. Uh, I think we're good. The <laughs> Golden Horde won't even defend them, even though they, they warned us. Meanwhile, Lithuania is looking very beefy considering where they started at. But uh, yeah, they're continuing to grow. I will pay the penalty for tech because that is going to allow us to uh, hit a little bit harder, which might be necessary for this war. Meanwhile, my subjects are over here losing battles, but still inflicting sizable casualties on them. 28% chance, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I'll go ahead and humiliate a rival. I don't mind that at all. Give the fort over to my subject. That way I don't have to pay for it. Nice little trick if you didn't know. And now we go headhunting stacks and uh, start killing off some enemies. Take a look at this one. <laughs> 
get a couple more occupations over here and get onto their capital, we should be able to piece these guys out. Absolutely. And we can even take some money from them. Obviously, I'd rather take land, but you know, we'll take what we can get here. It's a lot of money. Another benefit of having vassals, they don't take money in peace deals. Let's head on over and peace out Wallachia as well. Maybe we can take some money from them. And the coalition is actually disbanding because they're like, mm, Smolensk is actually beating up on people that were previously in the coalition. Might not be our best move. And Wallachia full occupied. Let's go ahead and uh, piece them out. Take all their money. And uh, might as well actually break off a couple of rivalries. Farm some prestige. Get your prestige as high as possible. There's no reason not to. Even if you're at 100%, taking away prestige from the enemy is also a very, very viable strategy. I could easily annex them. And I actually won't even get worse of a coalition. So let's go ahead and just annex them. And now Smolensk has warm seaports on the Black Sea. Very impressive. Pour it all up, of course. And now that we control the Dnipier, we can get some prosperity in the state of West Dnipier, which is uh, over here. That obviously does not help us, but we also get AE impact for 15 years and claims on the Russia and Ruthenia region. Okay, so that means we need to make our way out here and up north. And uh, once we finish those, we can actually do this and form Rus, which is definitely something we want to try to do. Though I think I'm going to hold off on clicking this until the uh, aggressive expansion impact will be a little bit more useful. The Golden Horde has no manpower and uh, their only ally is Georgia. So we can probably go to war with them pretty soon. I don't want to rush into anything, but it's it's definitely going to be doable. And I was a little quick to get rid of my mercs because uh, boy, oh boy, are we hurting for manpower here. Let's go ahead and get another company here. And this will actually allow us to consolidate a few of our regiments, which I happily will do. 10 will now become five, which is uh, pretty good. That puts us well under our force limit. And uh, these mercs will be uh, very, very helpful in keeping our manpower at least somewhat managed. Now is probably the time that we want to start annexing a couple of our subjects and we can yoink some development from Tver. And so 30 short years, we have done quite a bit of conquest. We definitely have some rebels to be looking out for, but uh, this is going to be quite smooth here on out, I think. Of course, we will continue to state everything up as long as our governing capacity will allow it because low autonomy means more force limit, more tax, all of that stuff. And take a look at this, reform Subdebnik, or I, I don't know any slavic languages so forgive me for my terrible terrible butchering of all these pronunciations the 30 provinces will lose 10 autonomy which is very very good for us Ooh, a famine yikes that's no good all the while we are working on our patriarch authority and, and i haven't actually consecrated any metropolitans outside of my capital so let's take a look here sadly we have like no development out here so <laughs> uh, we'll do what we can here yeah look at the development of our lands it's just trash and then over here is all green <laughs> red yellow green <laughs> It is what it is. This war is so, so doable. And we will get a few more claims on them once we click the mission. As far as Renaissance goes, we might be able to develop it a bit over here in Smolensk. But we don't really have a whole lot of development. Maybe Moscow would be better to dev it in. Smolensk is forest now. So yeah, probably don't want to dev it here. But we can dev it like in the province right next to us. Let's go ahead and develop it up. So once we get this prosperity, then we will begin the process of developing that institution. There we go. There's that prosperity. 39 is very solid. Now, obviously, we need to consider which idea group we want to go with because we are going to unlock one. I think it only makes sense that we go with a military based one. Quality clearly is a good choice because it allows us to stack those artillery combat bonuses. And that's actually the one that I'm thinking is probably going to be best. We could also lean into the cavalry bonuses as well because we do have the Cossacks available to us. Or we could just go straight admin, but we're behind on admin. And Diplo ideas, none of those sound very good to me right now. So I vote quality. Plus, once we form Russia, I'm sure we're going to get bonuses to our manpower, so we won't need quantity. So we're going to focus mostly on Diplo dev if we can. So let's go ahead and dev up Moscow here. Going to do a couple of clicks here, a couple of clicks here, just a few, and a couple more here. And then that will allow us to sync the remaining development from Diplo. And there you go. Uh, we still have quite a few points left over and we'll be able to embrace the institution as soon as we have the money. Integration is a slow process. Welcome to the folds of air. Glad to have you boys. Ooh, this is a good one. Disables called diet, but it also reduces the loyalty loss by seizing crown land and cost of rulers with uh, advisor and influence goes down. Ooh, monthly reform progress is very good though. And minimum autonomy and territories. We're going to go with that one for sure. That will boost up our economy quite a bit. We have broken the Tatar yoke because we have a bigger army than uh, the Golden Horde, which is pretty sweet. Until the death of our ruler, who is 47, we will gain uh, shock damage and diplo rep, as well as some claims on lands that we have for the most part. Couple down here, which obviously we will take. Looks like the Golden Horde is losing a war. They only have 13 men. So let's click this button here as well. That'll give us tons of claims to work through. Look at all that conquest, baby. That's a lot of conquest. Let's go for Voronezh. Let's attack. 
Hopefully Moldavia will just get handled by Kiev. That would be awesome if our subject just beat up on Moldavia. And Novgorod magically wants to join now? Oh, because uh, these guys are not the, the primary guy. All right, that's fine with me. They have 12,000 men running around. I don't know where they are, but uh, I'm also not really too fussed about them because they are getting beat up on by multiple fronts. Golden Horde, not going to live too much longer. They've got some tributaries, but uh, I'm not too fussed about that either. I want to embrace the institution. So we are going to go indebted to the burgers here. What that does is it gives us five loans that are all extremely low interest. Like it's only 0.5 ducats per month in interest, which is super, super reasonable. And that'll allow us to embrace this institution. So everything is going to be much cheaper. Now I can take my idea group and I will, but I want to be ahead of time, especially on mill. Uh, but Diplo gives us 20% trade efficiency. And now we can focus on our quality ideas and start working towards getting some ideas. Uh, this one here is going to get us all the way up into these fire damage and uh, start stacking these modifiers so we can get the boom boom shtick. Ah, uh, here's the final part of their army. Look at that. Oh, painful. So painful for them. And the Golden Horde, definitely not feeling so good, Mr. Stark. Let's go ahead and take the lands that we need for our missions here. So liberate the wild fields. Going to give us some mill mana, cav cost, and uh, manpower recovery, which is really nice. And permanent claim on Crimea, which is nice because I can actually just take some of the Crimea stuff. 15,000 cavalry will get us a uh, Cossacks regiment. And uh, calf the infantry ratio for 15 years and plus one cavalry shock. My goodness, a level three dragoon for half off. Uh, I think I think Parm wants us to go uh, cavalry Russia. I, I think so. So we also need to take these lands over here, and I will. And then the last part is to turn on our old friend Novgorod. Take a little bit more development out here. That is crazy how much that cost the core. So I guess we're going to be chilling for a little bit. Uh, the perfect amount of overextension, perfect amount of aggressive expansion. So yeah, now we're just going to be sitting on this war for a little bit. No big rush. It allows us to get quite a bit of looting as well. So yeah, we're going to have a bit of a uh, war exhaustion from that stuff, but I'm not too worried about it. Go ahead and take our justified wars here. Look at the devastation out here in the steps, man. Mm, these poor people. War exhaustion is going up pretty heavily now from the call for pizza. Why did the war score just go up so much? That's crazy. Now I can't even take everything that I was going to before. I mean, it's fine. I'll just separate piece these guys and make them a vassal. I don't have to core it then, so that's fine. Much more reasonable. Still a lot of land to core, but uh, not too stressed about it because I can actually yoink a lot of this development and that will free up quite a bit. And I'll rival the Seljuks because screw them. Let's begin the process of annexing these guys over here now. And we have liberated the wild fields, giving us some bonuses for 20 years and some claims, which is nice. And the Eastern Principalities, which will give us minus AE with all uh, countries in Russia and a level two mill guy. So I will happily take that as well. With loyal subjects and all the lands that we realistically need for the time being, I vote that we dissolve our alliance with these boys. Uh, let that truce start ticking down because we're going to need to take quite a bit of land to form the ruse. Also, I hate to do it, but I think we need to start building up a bit of a fort line to prevent our massive lands from being devastated during wars. I'll wait to take tech until we can get mill tech because mill tech is going to be very, very useful. Might as well recruit some streltsy. Nine regiments is pretty legendary and we can afford it. So we should probably get our value cannon. Hot dog, a free stability. We do still have a couple of loans out to our uh, burgers. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to repay those loans because uh, now our loans are much bigger. And then with that paid off, we are now going to take out more big loans. And then uh, we are going to pay off the four percenters. And now we have a lot of money, decent income, and our, um, what's it gonna call it? Our, our interest is much lower than it would have been otherwise. Ah, EU4 economics. We are over our governing capacity limit. So we have to be mindful of that. Go ahead and consecrate this metropolitan as well. And we've got another one up here. So very nice. The more patriarch authority we have, the better bonuses we're going to get. Mostly just the local unrest and the uh, manpower modifier. But it also frees us up to click one of these icons if we needed to. And we attack in two and a half years. Annexation is a slow process and Kiev joins the fray. Very nice. Uh, now that actually is going to put us way over our GC limit. I'm going to have to give up some crown land in order to uh, get that. So let's go ahead and go with these guys here. It's fine, uh, it puts us over and that automatically clears up those limits. Plus we also got a couple of extra men inherited from that war, which is going to be extremely, extremely useful. Though I should probably make sure that uh, these guys have as many Streltsy as possible because Streltsy are based, plus 10 fire damage. Pretty good. So we have an all Streltsy regular infantry with a uh, cavalry and one one cannon, the value cannon. And then the other half is all mercs and a cav. So very nice. Truce is up in May of next year. So we can get our armies prepared here. 
Ooh, six fire. Man, if this was late game, I would be super stoked about that. Truce is over. So let's go ahead and attack. We also have a Miltech advantage. So I think this is just like done deal already. Oh, nice. We got a wall breach that early on. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and assault uh, because it will use the Mercs. So there you go. We won the siege of their capital in uh, like a month and a half. So pretty good. Go ahead and do war taxes, at least for now. It'll save us a little bit of money in the meantime. Oh, nice. A comment. Love it. These guys will be in Ladoga, and uh, I think we are going to head in and meet them there. They changed their mind. Very nice. Meanwhile, England has 19,000 men chilling in uh, the south, so let's go ahead and uh, get them out of there. Good thing I built these forts, huh? Go ahead and take some tech, get some Cav Combat ability. Very nice. Puts us up to 30. They won the 14 percenter. That is such garbage. This game, man. And we have another reform. And funnily enough, it's actually military specialization. Plus five streltsy discipline and infantry cost. Say no more. I already know which one I want. England is on low enthusiasm, so we can just white piece them, which I will do. That gives us a ton of war score that we can then use to take basically anything we want in this war. Let's uh, start on the siege -in. Colonialism has spawned, so it's another institution that... Again, we have to develop that. More exhaustion is going up. I think that this is good borders wise, and then we'll just take whatever money they're willing to give us. That should be a nice bit of development that we can take back to Smolensk. Up to 27 development. Very nice. I'll actually even yoink that tax because taxation is theft and you can't convince me otherwise. Then we will core it all up. We will get one year's worth of trade income and some trade efficiency, as well as claims on a ton of lands that we already have. And now we just have to be Rus. I don't know how to do that. So uh, we'll see how to do that, but it'll come in time, I'm sure. And I am a dingus. I just talked to Parm and I actually need all of these provinces to form Rus. It's not Ruthenia in this timeline, it's Rus. So that, that makes more sense. I, I'm being dumb. So we're going to have a couple more wars, but it shouldn't be too bad. And uh, I forgot to unpause my recording. So I just attacked these guys who called in uh, an attack here and then this Podolia. And we took a bunch of land over here. We're in the process of coring it. I also started the annexation of Novgorod here, Nizhny Novgorod. We need to annex Belazero and this province from them and this province from them and this province from them. And then we can click the button and we can become Rus. Definitely having some rebel issues. So let's go ahead and uh, click a couple of these buttons. Also going to have to do a little bit more Florianomics. Pay off the one percenters and that will allow us to take another chunk of these loans out from these guys. And we'll pay back a couple of the uh, four percenters, specifically the smaller ones. And then turn off all of the forts that we don't immediately need because those are using a ton of our resources. And again, governing capacity is limiting. So let's go ahead and uh, click this button to make people nice and happy. And we'll go ahead and click one of these buttons here. And then we will yoink some more dev. Make sure we get our crown land up. Smolensk must grow, I guess. And we're finally almost breaking even on the economy. So that is good news. Time to turn the forts back on because it's time to go to war. We're going to unite the Rus against uh, below zero. Uh, and then we are going to attack them. Then we'll annex this province and these two provinces from them or three provinces, whatever they are. And then uh, we'll probably just peace out Moldavia separately. I don't really care. And we'll just head on over and siege down Sarai as quickly as possible. And let's just come on over and peace out Moldavia for money because uh, we need money. We have lots of loans. Lots of loans. We'll annex Bella Zero, this province here. And then we will also just take whatever uh, financial money we are able to get from those guys. That's the best way to make money in this game, in my opinion, is uh, just to go to war and take it from people that are less fortunate than you. And we core up everything we can as we can because... If you guys haven't noticed this, admin mana is a bit of a shortage. And with that, we need two more wars over here and to annex these guys, and we will be able to do that. Means we are gonna have to go to war with uh, Lithuania. I'm not too stressed about that. Well, I say there's no time quite like the present. We need more money anyway. So let's go ahead and attack these guys. They will call in Lithuania. Uh, we will obviously uh, come on down and siege down the war goals. And then we'll also try to get maybe a little something, something started over here. If Lithuania wants to go and sit on a fort and rot for a little bit, be my guest. And let's head on up and get them off of these forts. This is a woods fort, so that's a really good battle for us to be taking. And uh, we just stack wiped them. So the Battle of Peskov, probably what, would, what will be considered a turning point of the war. Meanwhile, we win sieges over here and we pass the forts off to our subject because I don't want to pay for them. We finish this out. We get our massed battery, which gives us discipline as well as artillery combat ability. And uh, Antebellum actually requires four ideas per group. So we actually need one more. So the first idea group from our next one, which is probably going to be like trade, if I had to guess, because we need an economy. Integration is a slow process. So let's go ahead and take over our subject. And they've got a little one stack over here that is suiciding because reasons. Make sure we are killing off as many of their armies as possible. That is another stack wipe. Uh, yeah. 
They're done. The Baltic states shall join the Rus. And I suppose we will take every province that we can in this war. What do you guys think you're doing there? Stop right there, criminal scum. We could release a couple of tags from these guys up here in the north. I think that would be like a nice little thing to do. Livonia and Estonia. Welcome, boys. They both have defensive ideas, which is pretty good. So uh, depending on how they go, we will probably make one of them into a march. Also, they're both Remova, which is kind of funny. We will continue to core up what we are able to because uh, admin mana is just a number. And I am once again asking for more governing capacity. Yoink some land and then immediately use it to get more governing capacity. <laughs> Though once we finally get admin tech, we'll finally get a little bit of governing cap because you can see here at eight, we will get plus 100. So we should probably try to uh, get that. Let's go ahead and focus on admin for a while as well. Finally making some money after we get some land up here, building a couple of buildings. Yes, we are in debt, but it's fine. We can just buy this down. And then over time, we will be able to make more money, to spend more money, to make more money, to spend more money, and, uh, you know, continue the cycle. Also, don't forget to turn your edicts off and consecrate your metropolitans all the way up to 72 Patriarch Authority. Very nice. So now I'm going to fish for radical reforms with the yearly inflation reduction and the trade efficiency guy. Get a little bit of extra mana. These guys are allied to Bulgaria. Of course, we're going to have to fight freaking Bulgaria. Uh, it's fine. I'm not really too fussed about it. I think it'll go fine. The Abbasid Restoration. Yo, the Nizrids have collapsed and are now the Abbasids. Very cool, man. You don't see that. I think that's actually a very rare thing to happen. So pretty sweet. Manpower recovery is definitely up from what it once was. And uh, we are making good money now. We can actually start paying off our loans, if you can believe that. With money left over to build some buildings. So very nice. The more buildings we get, the sooner we're able to kind of like start snowballing our economy. And I think now is as good a time as any. We're going to pop our golden era here, which is going to allow us to take this technology. Now, we're not going to get colonialism anytime soon. It doesn't look like anybody's going to get colonialism anytime soon. We're going to end up needing to develop it. So in the meantime, let's take this admin tech and we are going to go with trade, I think. Diplo is always nice for province war score cost, but trade is just like so good for me. And we're now going to get 10% fire damage on top of a 20% global trade power. So our economy is going to just keep going up, up, up. We also get goods produced. A lot of people don't know that. Your golden era actually gives you goods produced as well. Get our forts turned back on because uh, war will soon be upon us. And we're going to have to go to war with the Bulgars. And they're going to be pretty beefy. They uh, went eco quantity. So pretty good for them. Since we have such good cavalry combat ability, I vote we get some more cav. We actually need 15 for this mission here. And that will give us CCA as well as cavalry shock, which might be just the boost we need to uh to start crushing some bulgars so let's go ahead and uh just get all of them just all of them why not costs a lot of money but uh, i think it'll definitely be worth it nietzsche over here needs an ally and i think they actually might be a good one to use against uh, the bulgars so let's try that out so a truce is up we're going to have to get into position should be uh pretty pretty quick I i'm not really too too fussed about this at all and here we go radical reforms i do want to keep both these guys so you go ahead and you click this button here after you fire them, and then you can just rehire them so you trade money for mana. Pretty good trade in my opinion. Click this mission, and we will get 10 Cossacks regiments, which I didn't even see that happening. So uh, yeah, I read that as a Cossacks regiment, but uh, yeah, it's 10, 10 Cossacks, which if you don't know what Cossacks are, they are cavalry bonuses that do an extra 10% shock. So safe to say that combined with uh, this one here, our cav are going to do three shock damage. Compare that to infantry. That's less than two for both of them combined. This is three in just one of them. Obviously the zero is there, but so add those together. And uh, yeah, we get some very big numbers. Go ahead and unite Rus. And uh, that is fine. I'm happily going to win these battles and we get a five shock general. Let's go boys. Definitely need more cannons as well. We have the money, so we should probably get a few more. Yep, and all we need is this province and to be at peace, and we can form the Rus. Hey, Nitro wants to join. Heck yeah, boy. What are they going to do? Probably get rocked, but you know, I'm all right with it. Either way, better them than me. Sorry, Parm and my other Slovak boys. Oh, look what they did to my boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, and I mean how and then ever, the AI is absolutely incompetent, and uh, we are going to march straight onto their capital. So they can come on over here and see these boys down. Doesn't mean anything to me. We have their capital. So uh, let's just get them carpet siege down just a little bit over here. And uh, once we win this siege, we should be able to peace out the Bulgars. Might as well loot them up, get some devastation in their lands. Lots of devastation down here. Um, more to come, hopefully. Poor Nitra pushed even farther up into the mountains. <laughs> Look at them, dude. 56,000 men. They're just marching up there like they own the place. I would love to catch these guys out and destroy them in battle. 
I will probably go one more tech and then we will start developing for colonialism. It's probably what's best. Meanwhile, we can peace out the Bulgar. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of their money. And I mean all of it enough to pay off all of our loans and then have some left over, which is very nice. And there you go. Easy peasy. And once we core that up, we get to click the button. And I like clicking buttons. We shall reclaim Ruthenian legacy, giving us prestige, changing us to Rus, and we will become a duchy, apparently. We will gain the Sardom government reform, which is very nice, which is actually fixed to empire rank, so... Okay. We will get the Russian government ability, which we already have. Claim entire states. Modifiers giving us manpower, autonomy change, absolutism yearly, 350 govcap, as well as new traditions and ambitions, and we'll take a look at those. So let's click the button here. And uh, obviously, we have to decide a couple of things. First, what shall be our name? We shall be Ruthenia, Russia, Kievan Rus, or just Rus, which is based. Oh, that color is good. I like it. I really like that color. Heck yes. As far as our national ideas here, we can kind of decide. Manpower, manpower recovery, which are both very strong on their own. Legitimacy and prestige. Tolerance. CCA. Global trade power. Stab cost. Years of separatism. Tolerance of the true faith and discipline. Well, when we compare them to what we have right now, these ones are more focused on numbers, but there is the cav combat ability, which is really good. But I think artillery is probably better in the late game with the extra fire and the artillery cost, plus the fire damage. Contentious topic. We will not abandon our roots. We're going to keep our Smolenskian ideas. But when you take a look here, you see we have a much much bigger mission tree than we had before. And uh, let's start off by clicking the uh, heirs of Ruthenia here. If Wallachia exists, we'll gain a subjugation CB on them as well as Moldavia. So let's go ahead and click the button. Feel free to stop and read any flavor text that you see here, but, uh, and the world shall tremble. Our leader will gain one mil mana, 25 PP, yearly prestige and manpower in same culture group provinces. Very nice. The land of churches, which is already done, will give us patriarch authority, missionary strength, tolerance of the true faith. And with the interior stabilized, we get some dev cost, global prosperity growth, which is really nice. The dev cost will be nice because we're going to dev up colonialism very soon here. And an architect, which gives us construction cost, who is half off. So we need some East Slavic provinces with workshops uh, that are producing grain. That will be pretty easy for us to do. That will allow us to get lots of manpower and uh, land maintenance and national supply limit for the rest of the game. So I definitely want to work towards that. This branch right here is the late game branch, which takes you through absolutism and revolution. And taking a look through what uh, missions come, these ones will push us into Poland. These ones obviously push us into the Baltics and these ones push us into the Balkans. And then as you unite Bulgaria and Greater Moravia, we can embrace Pan Slavism which will give us the birth of Pan-Slavism as well as get us some bonuses to our mana generation, which is really nice. If we push into the Crimea, we will get some bonuses as well as allowing us to push out this way. Uh, and then obviously more into the Black Sea region, which will allow us to buff up the Navy at the very end, which is uh, pretty nice considering the fact that we're mostly landlocked, even still up to this point, we're very much mostly landlocked. Of course, you have to claim Sarigrad and you will get the third Rome and we will gain a territorial core on all unowned Byzantine core provinces and Imperial Restoration will allow us to unlock a decision to release Byzantium as a junior partner in a personal union once we break the hordes we will be able to push more into central asia which will allow us to uh, push into china if we so decide and of course you have to colonize the siberian areas if you don't know bering i don't know if it's actually this specific one but uh, bering is where the name the bering sea and the bering strait comes from he was a russian explorer of course we have the patriarchate of all rus which is very based and then we get the church and the state giving us some bonuses to our conversion stuff and morale damage for the rest of the game. Rus gains a permanent claim on all Christian provinces in the world. But my friends, I would not be able to do this mod justice. I encourage you to check it out and play it for yourself. It is out today, right now. Go download Antebellum and uh, it's going to be linked in the description. You can start as any of the Russian principalities, so you can start as Muscovy if you want. You can also even start as Novgorod, who uh, Parm told me is probably the easiest to form Rus. Obviously, you have a very nice economic base. But yes, I cannot encourage it enough. Check out Antebellum. It's one of my favorite mods of all time. I really do love it, and I have a ton of fun literally every time I play the mod. In case you did not know, my patrons get early access to all the videos that come out on this channel. So if you want early access to the videos, make sure you check out the link in the description below. My Discord, my subreddit, my Twitter, those things are all linked down there as well as my second channel, Schubert. You can check that out for some more edited U4 content. Most importantly, if you like the video, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because there is tons of fun stuff to come. Again, check out Antebellum, linked in the description. And until next time, stay chill.